I preach this morning in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is the fourth Sunday in our Lenten journey, and eventually this journey will lead us to a bloody cross and an empty tomb. And in week one, if you were here joining with us in worship, in week one we saw that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. And Jesus took a stand on the eternal word of God. And when he took a stand on the authority given to him by his heavenly Father, he knew his identity as the eternal Son of God. Now in week two, if you were here, we saw that Jesus, if he could not be tempted into temptation, to fall into temptation by the evil one, then of course the evil one would send threats his way. And that's what we saw in that week when Herod said, I'm going to kill you. In week three, Jesus sounded the clear call of repentance to repent of your sins and live or to remain impenitent of your sins and die. And this week in week four in our Lenten journey, Jesus has open arms. Jesus comes to you today with open arms to welcome you back home and to receive you back into his kingdom. Today, Jesus comes to you with open arms to receive you back home, to welcome you back home, and to receive you back once again. So our lesson today comes from the Holy Gospel of Luke. And I invite you to take out your Bibles this morning. We love our Bibles around here. Amen. So grab your Bibles. This is the authority on which we stand, so we want to open it and to follow along. It's found on page 1039, 1039 in the chair Bible, Luke chapter 15, if you are using your smartphone, your device, or the old school Bible right here, the old school Bible right here. And a special welcome to those who are listening online, those who are joining us via Facebook in our Local Channel 5 here in Greenville, we welcome you and it is a joy to come into your homes and to bring you the love of Jesus Christ. Now today Jesus comes to you with open arms. He stands as the Father waits for you, patient and long-suffering for you to welcome you back and to receive you once again. Verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. You see, Jesus receives sinners. Jesus receives sinners. Are you a sinner? He receives you. I'm a sinner. He receives me. And in our lesson, the crowds are gathering around Jesus because they know they are sinners. The tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to him because, you see, Jesus was not like everyone else. Jesus did not enter into relationship to take something from them, but to give something to them, namely himself. Because he knew that his purpose given to him by his heavenly father was not for comfort in this world. But he set his face toward Jerusalem from chapter 9 of the gospel of Luke all the way until he would hang there on a bloody cross. And on the third day after he was crucified to be raised again to new life, this was the purpose of Jesus. And this was why he came, namely for you, for sinners. And as the crowds gathered around Jesus... Sinners gathered around Jesus, but the religious folk, the Pharisees and the scribes, they grumbled saying, this man eats with sinners and he receives sinners. You see, Jesus is teaching about what the kingdom of God is like and Jesus did not come for those who have no need of a doctor, but he came for those who do need a doctor, for those who do need healed. For Jesus cleansed those with leprosy. He healed the sick. He raised the dead to new life. This is what Jesus was all about. And to further illustrate what the kingdom of God is like, he tells them a parable. Now, this parable is not an object lesson from which to deduce a few theological truths and go on our way. No. This is a parable to invite you, to invite me, and to invite all who hear into the immensity of God's love, grace, and mercy. 
And so we begin by looking at the younger son, verse 11. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. You see, the younger son has asked for his inheritance from his father. That is unheard of. His requests suggest to his father that he would rather have his things than have a relationship with him because his request is nothing more than asking that he would be dead. Because it was only upon the death of the father that the inheritance would be given. And to make such a request is to want the things from the family, to want the inheritance given to him, rather than live in a relationship with his father that is pure and holy and right. He would rather see his father die and perish and to take all the things that he wanted for himself than to live in restored relationship with his father. And so the father enables. He enables the younger son. He gives to him his request, and sometime God does the sum to us. He gives to you the request that you have because you demand it. Give me what is mine so that I can take with it and do with it what I want. Sometimes God gives to you what you want, but in actuality what you think that you want is not at all what you do want. But sometimes the love of the Father is to allow you to experience rock bottom. Not because He doesn't love you, but precisely because He does love you. And the only way that you'll learn that what you think you want is not at all what you want. What you think you want is actually bondage. What you think you want is actually torment. What you think that you want to long for will actually lead you to the pig's pen. The Father in His love allows you to receive what you want. What is it that you are asking today? That you have demanded of the Father and the Father has given it to you. And it's led you down to a path of darkness. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe you just can't get enough of it and you want more and more and more. Maybe it's immorality. One look turns to this, turns to this relationship, turns to that, turns to a broken family, turns to adultery, turns to divorce. What is it? Be very careful what you want. Because if you demand of it and you have your mind set on it, The Father in His love will let you reach rock bottom. You see, this is what happened to the younger son. He found himself out in the fields feeding the pigs. He was given everything that he wanted. He wanted his father's inheritance. And the father gave him his inheritance. And out of love, he released his son into the realm of darkness so that he could come to his own senses. And sometimes, parents, that's what you have to do with your kids. You can no longer shelter them from this world. You have to release them into the arms of a loving God. And when it doesn't make sense to you, when you want to protect them, when you want to enable them, you need to release them and let them go and experience what they think they want for themselves so that by God's grace they may come back into the light and come to their senses like this younger son. You see, everything changes for the younger son when he comes to a place of desperation, verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, 
his father saw him and felt compassion and he ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And let me tell you, when that celebration happens, there is celebration in the whole family. When a lost sinner comes home, the Bible says that heaven rejoices that the joy of God the Father looks down upon that repentant heart and he does not cast them out into darkness but receives them by his grace because in the only provision that will last in this life is the provision of our heavenly Father. What we think we want is not actually what we want. It's actually bondage. But what the father gives the younger son is freedom. He doesn't give him any old robe when he comes back home. He gives him the master's robe, the best robe in the house. He doesn't give him any old ring. He puts a signet ring on his finger, symbolically saying, you are my son. There is nothing you can do. No sin that is so great that you are no longer my son. And maybe I'm speaking to someone here. You have counted yourself lost because you have gone too far in sin. You have fallen into adultery. You have fallen into madness and anger. You have fallen into bitterness and hostility. And God is giving you a second chance. And he's coming to you today to give you that opportunity that you've had for years and years and years to experience the darkness of that place that you thought you wanted, but God is waiting for you today with open arms to take you back in and to give you everything that you truly need. And it wasn't just the fattened calf, any fattened calf that he gave his son. It was the one that he was preparing ever since he left. For this time to celebrate. And when things happen like this and God comes to a sinner, heaven rejoices, but not everyone rejoices. Because some choose to harbor bitterness and anger and hostility toward others. Verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry. He was angry and refused to go in. God has been giving you opportunity after opportunity to be filled with joy. And some of us have been so angry, so bitter, that we refuse to come in. And the father still waits with his arms, just like the father in the story. Grace comes to the older son like grace come to the younger son because in verse 28 it tells us that even though he was angry, verse 28 says his father came out and entreated him. This is grace. The father left the party, went out into the fields where the older brother was busy slaving, busy working, trying to earn the affection of his father, trying to earn the merits of his accomplishments, trying to earn this party for himself, and the father comes to him too. But when he does, he answered his father, not in love, but in the law. And he says this in verse 29, Look, for these many years I have served you, And you never disobeyed my command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed 
The fattened calf for him? I mean, come on, really? I'm the one that's been earning your love here. I'm the one that's been slaving for you. I'm the one that's been working diligently. I'm the responsible one. This is what I want. This is what I deserve. Give me what I deserve. And he was angry. Because you see, he did not get what he thought he was getting. Kind of like a man that was in the airport. A man who was very, very crude with one of the luggage handlers and he was on his time scale. You've been in the airport, you've traveled, you know how these places can get. He was a man on a mission. He had places to go, people to see, things to do, and he was very disgruntled with his attitude toward this luggage worker and demanded this and, come on, I want my bags tagged right now and give me this and I've got places to go, people to see and things to do and very rude. Well, eventually the man went on his way. The woman standing behind, seeing the whole scene happen, notices the luggage handler really wasn't affected by this. And she said to him, Sir, how do you deal with people like this every day? How do you deal with these people that demand of you such things? And how do you keep your calm and your cool? He said, Oh, man, it's no problem. This man's flying to New York City. His bags are going to Brazil. No problem here. No big deal. You know, when you don't get what you deserve, learn to redirect your anger. Being angry is good. But do not let the sun go down on your anger. Because if you do, you give the devil opportunity to come in and you see what happened to the older son. He was bound in the law. This is what I've done for you and you've never given me. He's gone into the relationship thinking of what he can get out of it, but Jesus is not like anyone else. And today, Jesus has come with open arms for you. Maybe today you're like the younger son, or maybe you're like the older son who is complaining, I have done all of this for you, and yet I get none of this. But the Father has compassion. That literally means in the Greek, splachitsama, it is an inward pulling of the bowels. When the father sees the younger son with compassion, as the father sees the older son with compassion, as he goes out into the fields, Splach Hitsima, there was an inward moving of the bowels, and the bowels were the place of love and pity. He had love upon them both. He had pity upon them both. And it's not like sympathizing with somebody. There is a comfort level to sympathy. You can send a card and keep your space from them, but the father had compassion. He was moved from the inside of his heart. He was compelled to action, just like the same way Jesus, when he saw the crowds and he saw the sinners, he said, I have come for you. I have come to die for you. I have come not for the righteous, but for the sick. And the Pharisees and the religious folk hated it. And they actually killed him for it. But God, in his mercy, was moved with splachitsama. Compassion. Compassion that moves to action. Grace came to both sons, but only one received the offense of grace. Because you see, by nature, grace is offensive. It is offensive. It is the reason why many of you are angry today. Well, that person never got what they should deserve. That court trial never happened the way that it should have. They never received their punishment. Are you the judge? It's grace. And if you got what you deserved, you wouldn't be here today. And if I got what I deserved, I would not be here today. There is an offense to grace. The younger son precisely got what he did not deserve. He was received back into the family. He was given the fattened calf that was prepared for him. He had received a signet ring signifying that he was a son and the best shoes in the house so that he can walk with gladness and joy. There was an offense to grace. The younger son received precisely what he did not deserve and the older son took offense because he received precisely what he thought he did not deserve but what he did deserve. And he was left in the offense. 
Today, God is waiting for you. Are you like the younger son? Are you like the older son? We're one of them. As I close the service this morning, I'm going to ask for our musicians to come and play as we have a time of ministry. You are one of these sons today. Both are prodigals. Both are lost. One is caught up in the law of doing right things to get righteousness and to be received into his family, to be received into his father's love. And the other received everything that he thought he wanted, but yet was left with gravel in his mouth. I'm going to ask for the congregation to stand. We're going to have a time of ministry, and this time is for you. I don't know where you are in your spiritual journey, but we all come into this place in different spiritual aspects of our walk with Christ. You maybe have been in the church your whole life. I don't care. I'm asking you today, how's your relationship with Jesus Christ? How is your relationship with Jesus Christ? What are you running from? What sin is in your life that you have never dealt with? What opportunity have you given for the devil for anger and hostility and bitterness to come in so that like the older son, you too are bound in the law today? God wants to free you from that. He wants to free you from that. He does not come condemning you. He comes as a waiting father does. His eyes on you. Today with all eyes closed, head bowed. Maybe you're like the younger son. You have received what you thought you wanted and today you are in a place of darkness. You are lost. And even now, you are coming to your senses. God, the Holy Spirit, is revealing to you that there is hope for your situation. No longer do you need to keep living with the pigs. No longer do you have to keep going through this motionless life of longing to be fed with the pigs. But today, God has a plan for you to get you out of the pig pen and to arise your heart and to go back home to your Father. Today, this is your day wherever you are in your relationship with God. God the Father comes with open arms to receive you back home and to welcome you to himself. Lord, I pray for each of these people here today. Wherever they are in their spiritual journey with you, oh God, I pray that you would capture their hearts, capture their minds, capture their spirits, Lord, today in the proclamation of your word that they might know the goodness of your love that's waiting on them to come home. Touch them, Lord, wherever they are in their journey. If they are lost because they have squandered everything you've given them, thank you for your grace to receive them back. And those who are bound in the law, Father, free them today that they might live in the abundant grace of Jesus Christ, their Lord. In all of this, we ask Jesus in your holy name.